to delete this one afterwards, but uh, yeah, just it's just a hangout session. But okay, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. And, it wasn't turned on. If you go ahead and hit reload, see if it pops up now. Anybody have a copy of that episode yet? Yeah, or like close the window and reopen it or something. It doesn't always refresh properly, but it, it's on. It is on YouTube now. Okay. Great. Hi. All right. <coughs> Sounds good. Or you can call and ask him by phone too. I'll play on speakerphone. Okay. See you later. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, New Jersey, too. This is just, there's nothing formal here. Just if you got some questions, you can go over them. And if we don't have any questions, then that'll be that. <laughs> it's your opportunity. Well, can we go through one of these, work, uh, go through the, the first worksheet? Fine with me. Sure, let's do it. Okay. So Cameron's talking about the worksheet from the chapter 51 through 56 um, uh, <clears throat> section there. Yeah. Get that up here on the screen. Just one second, I'm sorry. Something's going on my computer here. Great. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you know, I don't need to put it here. You can just use the, uh, I can just put my paper. Okay. So. I didn't grab my calculator. Okay. Can you read the numbers on the sheet? I'll just read them. Yeah. Do you, do you have it there? Do you want me to read it to you? Um, oh, no. I, I mean, I've got it. I just was going to. I'll just redraw the picture instead of trying to. Uh, oh, okay. I just didn't know if it would show up on here. Can you pardon on you don't have to switch yet? Or maybe you should. Oh, let's see here. What's you guys? The Earth sees the sun at 29, 31, 24 Pisces. So this is something from chapter 51. We've got the um, sun. Here's the Earth. Here's his Earth-Sun distance, which he feels comfortable with from um, part three, using that new bisected eccentricity. So this would not be the same distance Tycho would have used. Here's Mars. We observe the Earth this day at 15, 49, 12 Gemini. And the Sun sees Mars this day at 22, 18, 29, Cancer. Where did this number come from? How does he know where the sun sees Mars? Guys, how does he know, how does he know this direction, this angle here?
Now, if you're talking, you're muted. I hope you're talking. How does Kepler know where the sun sees Mars? Sorry. Uh, just that, um, that opposition. Is this an opposition? Are the Earth, Sun, and Mars all in the same? No. Um, uh, wasn't it where he looked how Earth changes every Mars year? Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember. Someone in Boston, no, how, how does Kepler know where the sun sees Mars? He knows where the sun sees Mars any day of the year. How does he know that? Uh, with the vicarious hypothesis? Yeah, with the vicarious hypothesis. Right. He's been using that since part two whenever he wants to know where the sun sees Mars, and it always works. So, yeah, that's how he got the sun-Mars direction. The vicarious hypothesis says Mars is at 22-18-29 Cancer. Okay. So what do we want to know when we're doing this? We're trying to figure out, and this is obviously not drawn to scale. I mean, the Mar Mars is farther away from the sun than the Earth is, so, you know. Can't figure this one out with a ruler. This is what we want to know. We're trying to figure out, this is chapter 51, so Kepler's going all around, uh, so Kepler's going all around the, um, you know, Kepler's going all around the orbit, and he's just finding, you know, finding a bunch of distances, because if he has a bunch of distances, then he can start figuring out whether his hypotheses about pulling the planet in and the sides are right or not. You know, if he doesn't have a... Um, so far, he'd been looking at longitudes, right? In chapters 46 through 50, which are... I, you know, I found an old version of the website. I was creating a new zip file of the whole website for a contact who was asking about it. And I found that the original web page for chapters 46 through 50 said, don't read them. <laughs> That's all it said. Anyway, chapters 46 through 50, Kepler was testing longitudes to see if he was right. Now in 51, he's going to get a bunch of distances. So back over here, that's what we're doing in this worksheet. We're trying to find this distance from the sun to Mars. We've got these, the diagonal directions. We know where the Earth sees the sun. Um, that would, you know, you just use a table. I mean, you know, it's sort of observable. But, you know, you, you, you don't observe where the sun is at by the use a table. We know where the Earth saw Mars because we looked at it at night. And we know where the sun sees Mars with the vicarious hypothesis. So the steps, there are some hints given on this worksheet. It first asks, what is the angle at M? So how do we figure out what the angle at M is? First, we've got to figure out what these signs are. I don't know if people notice this printable zodiac. It's really helpful. Anyway, so there are some Mars in Gemini, Gemini. And the sun saw Mars in Cancer. So these signs are right next to each other. So that's good to know. So how do we find the difference? How do we find the distance between these two angles here? Uh, is this a hard question? How do we find the, how do we find the angle at M here? We know what direction this is pointing in the zodiac. It's over here in Gemini. We know where the sun sees oh. it's over here in Cancer. How do we get the angle between them? You would just subtract sub subtract one number from the other. Okay. Which one do we subtract? Subtract the twenty two degrees whatever that uh, Cancer from the fifteen degrees Gemini. Let's look at where they are. Here's 15. Now, an angles go counterclockwise. Oh, oh okay. Um, so 15 Gemini is right here. 22 Cancers over here. Cancer is Gemini plus one sign, so 22 degrees Cancer is like 52 degrees Gemini. So we just subtract these two. 52, take away this other one. 
and you just use my calculator to do it. These are just so handy, there's no reason. You know, I mean, a lot of the math, you're doing it yourself, it's a good idea. Don't just use a calculator all the time, but for subtracting, if you've done a few, feel free to use a calculator. And, oops. Hello. Hey, Ray, what's up? Yeah, you are. <clears throat> I need to print out that other here. Yeah, you're yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, if you want to what we can do is I can if you want to mute your computer, I can just put my phone on speakerphone and you can listen by telephone if you want. Then then we'll be at the same time. Give it a shot. I'll put it on speakerphone now. You know, if it doesn't work, just hang up if it's helpful. Oh, yeah, but, but go ahead and say what you're, uh, so some people can hear you. So what, what did you want to try again, Ray? Yeah, uh, yeah I was going to propose to find out the, uh, the angle between Cancer and Gemini by creating... Uh, half a circle uh, right there, or even full circle, and that's how we're going to find out the angle. You mean like drawing a circle around Mars, around M? <laughs> Ray, you mean like draw a yeah. circle? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good idea. Oh. And we can, we got our zodiac chart. So if you got your zodiac chart, it's like M is in the middle of it. Then we, we go out to 15 degrees Gemini, and we go to 22 degrees Cancer, and we find the angle between them. So anybody? Uh, and then I was just saying, you know, I just use my calculator, which does degrees and minutes and seconds, and I got it's uh, 36. Degrees, 29 minutes, 17 seconds. Is that what, anybody else get that? 36, 29, 17. Is that, did anybody in Seattle get that? Boston? Uh. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. And these angles are equal. Now, if you've got two lines that come together like this, they keep their opposite angles are always, are always the same. So we found this angle down here, same as the angle up top. Okay, good. We're on our way to using the law of sines now. We've got an angle and its opposite side. The, which angle should we tackle next? Not a rhetorical question. What, what angle should we tackle next, Cameron? Cameron stepped out to print the thing. No, I'm, I'm back. I'm okay. here. I was just, I needed the zodiac chart. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we've, we've got ourselves the angle of M. By, we could call this one, instead of 22 Cancer, we could call it 52 Gemini. Gemini is the sign after Cancer. They go, they go counterclockwise. So those are two spots. So this angle of 36 degrees seems reasonable. It passes the, you know, sounds okay. Let me check here. Doesn't seem crazy. Uh, so what, what what angle do we look at now? E. E. Okay. What's the angle?
Earth sees the sun at 29 Pisces. How many signs ahead is uh, Gemini? The Earth saw Mars and Gemini. Uh, three. Right. Yeah, Gemini is three signs ahead. So from Pisces, we go all the way through Aries, we go all the way to Taurus, and then we're in Gemini. So there's two ways to do this. One is we could, you know, find out with these angles, you know, these reach 30 degrees. Aries is 30, Taurus is 30. We could add the 15 degrees of Gemini, and we could add in what's needed to fill out Pisces. 30 minutes there. One way to do it. Another way is to express Earth-Mars, this line. It's in Gemini, but how many degrees would it be in Pisces? Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm just getting a little confused. I'm trying to figure out what direction I'm going to mark these little lines you made on the zodiac here. Um, can you, uh, what's the question again? So the angle of E. It's done over here. The Earth sees Mars over here in Gemini. We want to find this angle between them. This is okay. the angle. What's that? Okay, that's uh. So you're starting from Pisces and going to Gem. Pisces going to Gemini. Okay, that's angle E, right? Okay. Right. The cent this point becomes is E now. And right. Right. E, I see the sun over here, and I see Mars down here. So I want to know what this angle is in between them. Um. It's 29 Pisces. So you'd add uh, three signs, so it'd be 90 degrees, or would it be 60 degrees? 60 degrees plus 29 degrees, and then subtract. Let's. Oh wait, let me see here. How would you do that? Which one's farther ahead? Pisces uh, or Gemini? G Gemini. Yeah. Um, so from the beginning of Pisces, we went 29 degrees to get where the Earth saw the Sun. From Pisces, the beginning of Pisces, how far did we go to get to where the Earth saw Mars? We can find the difference between those two arcs. Right? The difference between them is the amount that we're looking for. Right. How long is this blue arc here? How many um, degrees? Ninety plus like fifteen minus one, right? Something like that. Let's so talk about, the, about the, the whole yeah, the whole blue thing. Hundred four degrees. Why did you subtract the uh, one? Oh, I was just adding the. I was just adding. Oh, because it says 29 Pisces. Or oh, wait, no, that doesn't make it. I don't know. I'm getting confused. It's hard to see where these lines are. I haven't really mapped it out on my chart yet. How many degrees into Pisces is 15 degrees Gemini? Hey Ben, we're just doing a uh, open Q and A. 15. Pardon me. 15. How many degrees in Pisces? 15 degrees Gemini. You're asking to add the whole blue line in degrees? How long is the blue line in degrees? Yeah. Oh, it'd be three signs, mm -hmm. which is 90 plus 15. Exactly. 105. Right. 
The blue line's 105, 49, 12. Ben, we're going through right now the, um, we're going through this, um, we're working through this worksheet uh, from Chapter 51 where Kepler was going through and finding, this chapter is going through and finding the distances all around the orbit. Because um, he's been looking at whether the longitudes are right, and now he's like, let, let me just get some distances. Let me figure out what this thing even looks like. So to do that, he's got to find some distances, and we're going through uh, the homework on how to do that. So, yeah, the blue, right. So 15 degrees Gemini, like 105 degrees Pisces. <laughs> the green line is how far the Earth saw the sun into Pisces, and that was 29 31, 24. So what's the difference between these two is what we want. We want to take 105, it's full arc, and we want to take this arc out of it and have what remains. So <coughs> we can do that subtraction. Let's do this one by actually writing it out instead of using the calculator. So I'm just going to copy these numbers down again. So I've got 105, 49, 12 Pisces, which is really 15 degrees Gemini. I'm going to subtract 29 degrees, 31 minutes, 24 seconds Pisces. This is where the Earth saw Mars. That's the, the direction the Earth saw Mars in. This is the direction the Earth saw the Sun in. So by subtracting them, we're going to get the angle at E. So let's uh, let's do this subtraction. And again, if you've done a few, once you've done a few of these, you can just you know use a calculator. Don't feel don't worry. Don't feel bad about it. It's, it saves time. Kepler hired a calculator. Ours are, you know, once we get free, that's nice. You know, charge per hour. So how do we subtract? How do we do a? I feel funny asking this, but how do we subtract two numbers? When we're when we're doing, you know, a subtraction, do we start from the, the bigger part of the number or the smaller part of the number? The bigger. You subtract. The, s the smaller from the bigger. Yes, but what, here's what I mean. What? <laughs> if I'm just subtracting these two numbers, do I start in the hundreds place or the ones place? In the ones place. Yeah, that way you don't. That way you don't wind up having to carry at the end and you get all screwed up. So. So if we do that here. Can we take 24 seconds out of 12 seconds? Nope. OK, so what do we do? Turn it into 104 degrees. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, you got to change the, the top number Okay. to 104 degrees. Well, that would give us 3,600 seconds. That might be overkill. Change it into 48 minutes and 72 seconds. Exactly, right. We'll turn one of our minutes, because a minute is 60 seconds, we'll turn one of the minutes into 60 seconds. Oh, yeah, OK. OK, now can we subtract? Can we, can we take 24 out of 72 now? Those are good numbers. How many uh, how many days is seventy two hours? Conveniently, that's that's three days. So right. So so when we take away one day, how many how many is seventy two minus twenty four? How many hours in two days? Forty eight. Thank you. Forty eight. Okay. 
can we take 31 out of 48? 17. 17. And what's 29 out of 105? 7. Uh, oh, geez. We can do some parent <laughs> if we got to. We don't need to be ashamed. We can do it. It's okay. No, it's 76. No, 86. Well, let me, what if this was 30 instead of 29? What would it be if you subtracted 30 from 105? <laughs> 75. 75. That's probably not 56. It's, yeah, 76. Okay. So that is our angle at E. So I'll, I'll put it in blue here because it's an angle. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Make that blue. Here's our angle at E. It's 76 degrees, 17 minutes, and 48 seconds. Is does that sound acceptable? Okay, so how do we how do we find the Sun Mars distance? Are we ready to find it yet? Do we need to find anything else out in our diagram, or are we are we ready to to go for it? Is it the law of signs? It's the law of signs. Everybody's favorite, because it's not the law of tangent. Yay! Yay! Okay, so how do we use the law of signs for this problem here? What are, what's the proportion we're going to set up here? Is it sine alpha over A is to sine beta over B? That's right. So how, how do we, uh, so go ahead and can you, can you say out what it's going to be for what we're trying to find here using the numbers? Um, well, I, well, just maybe this is unnecessary, but I'll go ahead and do like you said and draw that triangle. A, B, C, little angles A, B, and C. And the law of sines says that A over sine of A equals B over sine of B. Or you could write them upside down, it doesn't matter. Where the little letter is the, the angle opposite uh, the side of the same letter. So we're looking up for that red one, right? Yeah, this is, we're trying to find how far away Mars is from the sun. This is a procedure Kepler does a bunch of times in this chapter to start, you know, feeling out Mars' orbit. <laughs> So I can't really see what all that is, but oh, other way, one more, there. Oh, okay, so um, so a over nine seventy six degrees. 17 minutes, 48 seconds. Right. Let me write that up. Instead of A, I'm going to write SM. So that's that distance we're looking for. SM over the sine of 76 degrees, 17 minutes, and 48 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, equals SE, which is 99, what is that, 674? I mean, 764? Yep. Okay over 36 degrees, 29 minutes, 17 seconds. Good. So now how do we, how do we make this happen?
you just... If we don't have a calculator that lets us put in degrees, minutes, and seconds, how, how do we find it? How do we, how do we turn this into something we can find the sign of? How do we turn this into just degrees? I'm, I'm assuming not everyone's got a calculator that does that. How, how would we do it? Just into degrees? How, how do we, and I'm saying, oh, how like do we the sign of 36, 17, 48? I mean, I got a calculator. I can, I can just do it. I can put 17. Whoops, not 17. The sine of 76 degrees, 17 minutes, 48 seconds. And this calculator, you can just push that in, and it'll give you an answer. Not every calculator is going to take degrees and minutes and seconds. So I was wondering how we're going to, how we would do that otherwise. Oh, you look up a sine table and get as clo as close as down to the minutes and seconds you can, and then you split in between, you know, 76 degrees and 77 degrees and find the, the average. Well, let's say we also don't have a sign table, because we probably don't. But let's say we do have a calculator that can do a sign. How do we get the sign of this if we can't put in degree, minutes and seconds directly? Would you divide, divide it by, like, 60 or something? Uh, divide what? By, the whole thing by 60? Well, I guess seven, 17 minutes by 60, and then 48 seconds by 360, or 3600, or something like that. 3600, right. So if we wanted to, we could say 76 degrees plus, instead of 17 minutes, we'll say it's 17 Over 60. Yeah. degrees plus 48 over 3600 degrees. So we would do this, we would do this addition. So say 76 plus, in fact, your calculator, you might have to do this in, in a lot of pieces, but if you've got one where you can type a bunch of things at once, 17 plus 17 divided by 60 plus 48 divided by 3,600. Now, I'm not going to go through everything about how to use a calculator, but if you've got one where you can only do one, like addition or dividing at a time, it would be different. But if I put that all in, I get... 76.296666 degrees. So now I can push in my calculator, I want the sine of 76.296666. And I get 0.971535 and so on. I'll just stop it right there. That's enough numbers for me. Any questions about that? About how to uh, get a? Does everybody have within their server? Does, at this point, can everybody does everybody feel confident, comfortable that they've got some piece of equipment? Hopefully, a calculator, a computer, if you really have to. Really, a calculator is way better for this. But does everybody have something you can use that you feel you could? Where'd you go? With degrees and minutes and seconds, uh -oh. get get a uh, get a sign. Look at people. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So let's finish our law of signs then. So we've got S equals ninety nine seven six four. Okay, so let's test it. Let's uh, everybody. What is the sign of thirty-six twenty-nine seventeen?
you know, also show if you're real desperate, you can oh, actually let me let me let's I'm looking for an answer. And I'll show you what you can do if you're real desperate. And you have to use a computer. <laughs> I know. Ugh. Not a computer. I know, it's terrible. So did anybody get that sign there? Sign of thirty six, twenty nine, seventeen? I don't. I don't have a calculator or anything. I don't know what. What's sine thirty six at least? Sine thirty six degrees. I could do the rest, but you can't do the rest. You can't. Well, what's the sine of thirty six degrees going to help you? How's that going to tell you what the sine of? What, what would you do if you had it? I'll tell you what it is. Well, sine you just put the uh, other numbers over 60 and 3600 and then add it to the to the sine of 36 degrees. No, you wouldn't. Oh. You'd okay. add them to 36 and then take the sine of it. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, I guess I'll show the computer secret. since uh, I mean, it's impossible to work through this book without a calculator or a computer that can... I'm going to share my screen. Let's take a look at how you can do it if you're, if you're so desperate you have to use a computer. So, if you go switch over to the, the screen I'm sharing here if you're not already on that. This is Wolfram Alpha. It does any math you want it to. Yeah. And so, uh, you just go to wolframalpha.com and it doesn't know, you, sometimes you got to like figure out how to type it the right way. But what sine of, and I put it in parentheses, if I didn't put it in parentheses, I got all confused. Sine of 36 degrees, 29 minutes, 17 seconds. And it gave me this number. Whoops. Wow. 0.59, so it's 0.594655. I'll, I'll stop with that. It's over here. Oh. 0. 594. What is it? 594655. Okay. So that's what I've got written down here. And I'll check it with my calculator, which I like so much better than the computer. I'm 36 degrees, 29 minutes, 17 seconds. And 0.594655. Okay, good. So I like that. How did how did you type that into that website again? <laughs> what did you do? Let um, me switch that back on. Can you see that there? Mm-hmm. So I typed the sine of, and then in parentheses, I just typed out 36 degrees, 29 minutes, 17 seconds, and then a closed parenthesis. Okay. Without the parentheses, it's screwed up, just so you know. Anyway, that's, uh, you can just type that, and it'll tell you what the sine is. Okay, can I switch over to the other thing? Sure. So here we are with our law of sines then. So we've got the sine of 36 degrees and all that. Put it in here. So we've got a lot of this. We've got all these, uh, the signs are taken care of. What do we do next? How do we find the Sun-Mars distance? Just cross, multiply, and then divide, right? Yeah, let's think about why that why that works. So, just to, let's make it even clear. Let's 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 do it. Let's add one more step to it. Let's go ahead and do this last division here: nine nine seven six four over point five nine four six five five. I'm going to go ahead and divide that.
and I got 167,768. And write this last step one more, just one more time. This might seem like overkill. But so I got the Sun Mars distance, whatever it is. I know that if I were to have divided it by 971535, 0.971535, I'd get 167,768. So if I divided it by this, I would have gotten that. But what is the Sun Mars distance? The risk of making things excessively simplified, let me ask this question. I've got some number here, I don't know what it is, but whatever that number is, a third of it is four. <laughs> What's and my actual number? Multiply four by three. Right. And the number is four times three. And I can say that if I multiply both sides by three, I've got three of my number divided by three. That just means my number is four times three. So for SM here, we could say that SM equals 67768 times 0 0.971535. Yeah. Let's see what we get when we do that. Times point nine seven one five three five. Okay, here's the answer I got. I got uh, one six two nine nine two. So that's supposedly this uh, Sun Mars distance here in the diagram. Two nine nine two, and um, this is the example Kepler goes through on page five seventeen. He says it was one six two nine nine four. We got one six two nine nine two. Close enough. Don't worry about that kind of difference when you're redoing Kepler's work. Okay. Okay. And so that would be that would be the answer to that worksheet then. Right. The Sun Mars distance is one six two nine nine two. Okay. Okay, so that's using the vicarious, and now he's going to compare it to the diametral. Basically, compare the um, the uh, the lengths from Mars as seen from the apparent sun versus uh, R H in the other worksheet. Yep. Right. Yeah. He used the vicarious hypothesis in this, but more directly, I mean, you, you know, he used an observation. Right, yeah, observations. Yeah. Or you said you could use the bisected also. Uh, in 56. I mean, there's two different things. I just, it was an unnecessary clarification I shouldn't have said. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. In other words, this is an, uh, this is an observed distance. 162992 is observed. That's how far Mars actually is from the sun. What uh, we're going to do next with the next worksheet is see whether his diametral hypothesis gives the same distances. Right. But they're not based off observations. It's... Correct. Yeah. It's based totally on this, uh, this hypothesis of his. It's based, well, when, when, we, when we go through and do it, then we'll see what it's based on, based on this hypothesis. Um, I was trying to remember what you said in this question um, when he's adding up all the distances, the diametral distances. 
because he does it for like what is it? Doesn't he do it 360 times for each degree? Uh, for when or when he uses this diametral distance model, doesn't he use it all around the eccentric, like for each degree, taking these to try to find the you know the orbit? He takes he does these calculations for every degree, right? Yes, I mean he hasn't. What you're describing, he never actually does in the book, but he he could if do that at this point if he wanted oh, okay. to. Okay. Anyways, my my question was, how is that not how is that different? Taking all if you take all those distances, how is that different than the area of the orbit? Great. I don't know if you already answered it, but no, it's a great, it's a very good question, and to go through it's an important thing, and it's something Donahue disagrees with, and he's wrong yeah, in chapter fifty nine. Um, in chapter 59, in those pro theorems, yeah, would, uh, have you watched the? Um, you haven't watched the, the thing, the class on 57 through 60 yet, have you? Um, wait, is that the one you just did? It's the one I did without any, without an audience or anything. Yeah, happened. no, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Well, in that pro theorem, Kepler says that if you add up the diametral distances, it's the same thing as the area swept out. Okay. So there is no difference. Okay, okay. In other words, you know, way back when, back in chapter 40, he'd said, oh, I, you know, area is very convenient, but it's not the same thing as the sum of the distances. In chapter 40, he already has the diametral distances, and he sort of mentions, of course, if we added up these things, it would give us the area. Anyway, and then he just kind of keeps moving on. Okay, I get it now. You know, some people think that you know Kepler wasn't really thinking that when he originally wrote Chapter Forty, but he added it in to sort of lay the groundwork for you to say later, "Oh, hey, we can you know the diametral distances. That's great. They make the area." Mm-hmm. Uh, we can definitely go through that second worksheet, but I ask at the other uh, the other locals. Are there any other any other different questions besides that? Hey Jason. Um, hey Ian. Actually, we just <laughs> right as we were uh, right as we were unmuting this Google Hangout, you were talking about diametral distances because we had muted this Hangout. We were looking back to this other video when you were going over um, how Kepler found the found that the secant of the point on the orbit with the greatest optical equation was actually equivalent to the or the difference in the secant to the uh, to the hundred thousand uh, mm -hmm. to the chosen hundred thousand radius radius yeah of the orbit was the same as what he suspected needed to be shaved off and we were just going through um, anyway I was just trying to figure out why it was that the secant uh, why it was that the secants were actually equivalent to that diametral distance. And so we were just looking at your, your last uh, class here. Uh -huh. and, um, I think I understand why. I mean, because if you look at the... Uh, and maybe I can just take the camera and you can just... I don't know. Uh, let's see... Okay, because so here you have the center. Uh huh. Here you have the sun. Right. Uh, and then here you have a line going out to the orbit. And then here you have the optical equation. Yep. Um, you could make the secant, I guess, one of two ways. You could either just put that same angle here at the top, and then draw a line out and then connect it to the tangent which is along the uh, the edge which uh, intersects the or which touches the circle at this point and then that little distance there is 429 right but then, uh, yeah. Yeah, but then so. that's the same thing as if you just took the because these are similar uh, triangles here this one and this one yeah, they're equal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, equal exactly. So then, 
you don't have to, because I was trying to... Anyway, so I, I realized, or I th think I realized, that if you just have the... So that for any point along the orbit, if you simply draw a perp perpendicular to the uh, line which goes through the point on the orbit, through the center, as it does here, then that relationship will be maintained. That 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 this length will always be equivalent to the to this length. If I'm understanding it right. Um that I'm just not sure how you would put it at a different place. I mean, I agree, I agree with what you said as far as like that being the 429 and that those those lines are the same. I totally I just I didn't quite understand your last thing about could you draw in are you saying like doing a similar thing in other places besides at the place of greatest optical equation? Yeah, that these two lines would be I'm just trying to I was just trying to understand why it is that the secant which I understand to be this length here generated by this tangent operation is uh -huh. the same as the hypotenuse of the right triangle which is generated by this oh uh, set the metal part of your compass on the right over there on the, the, the initial that point uh, straight out from the center yeah and then set the pencil lead on the center and then draw down or now draw a circle at least a portion of a circle there you go so um, now you've got that same construction down there, where that point at the bottom where the sun is is the secant. Yeah. Right. I don't know if I. Well, maybe that wasn't what you were. Hmm. Well, no, that's no, that's. Um, I mean, that's a demonstration of it. But like for this point, for example. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me just see if I can angle it here. Or you can draw it and then put the camera up too. Oh yeah. Maybe both at once. Okay. You draw it. Draw it. Okay, so at um, okay, so here I have the center and the sun, and mm -hmm. then a point on the orbit. Right. And then the optical equation right there. Yes. Um, but then, if you take uh, that angle and uh, subtract it out of the um, the mean anomaly here, eccentric, sort of, yeah. or the eccentric anomaly. Sorry, mm -hmm. put that angle, subtract it out of the eccentric anomaly at the center, and then draw a line out, which hits the tangent, which goes, which touches the circle at that point. Then you'll have this little extra distance right there. Can you see that? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay, so you basically, yeah, so this is the secant for that angle at this, um, yeah, the secant for this optical equation. Uh, yes, yeah, I... <laughs> it's hard to see. Well, it doesn't, it, it doesn't focus that close, so you put the camera, it doesn't get better um, getting closer. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think so. Um. Okay, let me just go through it again. Center, sun, 
point on the orbit, uh, optical equation. Right. I'm going right. to put this angle right down here. Okay. At the center. So I drew another line all the way out, which intersects at this point the tangent, which touches the yes. orbit at this point. So then this little extra distance here. Um, so then this is the secant. Yes, that is the secant there, right. But then this secant doesn't look as big as the diametral distance, which goes, here's that point, there's the center, but then it goes back here, and the the perpendicular from the sun to that line, which goes from the point on the orbit through the right. center, uh, that line looks... Uh, it's much, It's longer, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's because you're, you're making... You're, you're correctly making a line that is the secant. Yeah. However, it's the secant where the radius is the normal radius. Uh-huh. Again, here, here's what Kepler wants to use. Back at that other line that was at the, at the quadrant, on the right of the circle, at the greatest optical anomaly over there. Uh, hold on, hold on. Here? Yeah, that one. Right, Kepler proposes, he doesn't want to use this. See, the distance of this from the sun to that point is the secant. That length, that is the secant line. Remember, the, the secant isn't the excess, it's the full line. Yeah, right, that whole right. line, that line is the secant. Right. Um, you know, let me let me redraw that on this paper because I know this camera because I don't know if everyone else is, can see. I mean, I know what you're getting at, but if it, this might not be, let me let me redraw it over here. Okay. And let me know if I come. Okay. Not sure how clear that is for everyone. Well, I, don't have, I don't have a compass. So I'm not gonna have a good circle. No. Nope. So over here, here we are at the, is that, yeah, that looks right, okay. And then here's the sun. So now what you had done was uh, you had taken the same angle and you, you drew it over here. This is a right angle. And you said this spot here is the secant. Right? Here's 100,000. Here's the secant, and here's our distance of about 429. Uh, so far, so good. Yep. And then you're saying, well, let's let's do a let's make an analogous con analogous construction somewhere else on the circle. Like, let's say we're right here. So draw a line to the sun. Draw a line to the center. We bring this angle over here so that we get. get this line coming out. So these two lines are parallel, just as they were over here. That's a result of these angles being the same. And then we draw a perpendicular, a tangent right here. Which creates an intersection point. And you notice that that is definitely just not the same as if we drew a line through the center did what Kepler said to do. Draw a line through the center and drop, should have been using more different colors, and then drop a uh, perpendicular here. I'll make this, well, I'll make it red so you can see it. So this red line is what Kepler said the diametral distance is. And you're pointing out, like, hey, this is clearly not the same length. This is the secant, but it's not the same length from the center out to this point here. Is my understanding you right? Is that what you were you were, you were saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, Kepler is not using. He's using the unsecant. Like over here, from the sun to Mars, is the secant. Right. And instead of the secant, he's going to use the unsecant. So in this one, the unsecant, 
that's a silly word to say, but anyway, the unsecant is just the, uh, you know, is this radius of the circle. Now over here, to make the analogy, we have to make the sun to spot on the uh, circle distance, we have to make this the secant. So just as over here, the spot from the sun to the point on the eccentric is the secant, we need to make this the secant. And we want to take the unsecant. In your construction, you used the right optical equation, and you went from the radius and made the secant. Yeah. Which over here it does give you the sun Mars distance, but I mean the sun to eccentric distance. But but here is goal. You know what it, what, what Kepler would say is that in this this triangle right here. On this triangle, the sun to eccentric distance plays the role of the secant because it's opposite the right angle. And then this red line is analogous to this unsecant over here. So Kepler was okay. going to say where the distance would have been the secant, take the okay. un where the distance would have been the secant, take the unsecant. Okay. And so that's the, this is the diametral distance. So Kepler would say over here at this anomaly, at this spot over here, this, uh, you know, this, uh, oh, I said optical anomaly before. I meant to say optical equation. Anyway, over here at this anomaly, yeah, so we'll, whatever distance this would have been, which we know is not how far away Mars is, right. let's, just, let's see what this red distance is and see does it, is it right or not? Does it match the observations, which he found a whole bunch of in Chapter 51 um, in what we were just... Uh, and that worksheet that we just went through was an example of finding one of those distances. I see. So that uh, that distance from the sun to the point on the orbit in the second example that you did mm -hmm. um, is uh, that would be the secant value if you had done the construction. Uh, using the red line as the radius of the circle using that optical equation as we had done in the first example. Exactly right, yes. Right. Okay, that that makes sense. I was just trying to figure, I because I couldn't, because I didn't know what a secant was and then, you know, but then I figured, found out what a secant was, but then I couldn't figure out why um, why he was using this construction to as a representative of the um, of, of of using the secant value, taking that as the orbit, but then as the distance, but then adjusting it down based on what the you're saying the unsecant should be. <laughs> right. Yeah. Another word for the modern word for the unsecant is the cosine. I like unsecant better because it's, un <laughs> it's unseen, you know, it's unseen as to what its significance is until Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Sure, sure. Um, so I think it would be good to go through that that second worksheet where we do an example of this. But let me uh, first ask also, if, uh, Detroit. Do you have any other questions uh, other than that one? Other than do you have any anything you'd like to bring up uh, before we do that worksheet? Okay. Huh? Oh, Jason, um, we're, Alan and I are going to try to do that part on our own, so we're going to sign off now, and thanks so much for your help. Okay, sure. Oh, and just, uh, yeah, just as, a, as a reminder, I'm going to, um, oh, yeah, okay, good, have fun. Thanks, good night. Good night.
Okay. Okay. Looks like we're going to uh, take a look at this worksheet, or at least start it here. So, clean up some of the stuff here. And we're gonna we're gonna come back to this number. So this is the number that we should be finding as we do this other well not should be finding, but Kepler hopes to find, because he's hoping the diametral distances work out. So that's what we're gonna see if we can get over here on uh, on this one. Oh hey, yeah, actually yeah, New Jersey yeah, Ray, you guys uh you guys have any other questions first before uh, before we jump into this? For the diametral distance worksheet, or for no, the no, no, for the for the diametral distance, I got one six three one eighty. Yeah, that's right. And then, well, what what did you get for the angles at M and E on Chapter Fifty One's worksheet? Uh, the angle of um, Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, I got 36.49. The decimal is 36 degrees. That's close. 36.49 is 36 degrees 29 minutes 24 seconds. That's only a 7 second difference, so that couldn't be it. And what did you get for? Oh, what, what, what did you say you got? Is your answer for this one 160? What? One, one, one six, uh, the, the distance between the Sun and Mars is 163001. Oh, oh, that's close enough. You're okay. It might just be because you only kept two decimal places. I mean, what did you get for the angle at E? Um, 76.3, whatever that is, 76 degrees. Yeah, that's yeah. also only that's only twelve seconds off. I, I think yeah. it's probably just those two differences, you know, added up. And I mean, if you're, you know, if you're, I mean, that's less than. I mean, that's like what, like one percent, tenth of a percent, a hundredth of a percent. Yeah, I mean, if you're you're a hundredth of a percent different than Kepler, then I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it, it came it came from doing that, from from rounding those off or ending your decimal points like that instead of using the full the full values. That's why. Yeah, you one six one six three oh oh one. Yeah, that's that's a small difference, no problem. Okay. I don't know if you guys could hear that. That was Howard had a question about the fifty one worksheet. Okay, on fifty six. Now I got to uh, actually get off at about ten minutes, so um, we might just only have time to start this one. So let's go. Oh, let me switch. Oh, go ahead. Yes, on the phone? Yeah, we didn't get that last part. You just said about 10 minutes. Uh, well, when Howard used, used, Howard said that he had a, the angle at E was 76 point, what did you say, 3? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, when Howard used 76, Howard used 76.3 degrees as the angle at E, the angle at E is actually 17, uh, 76 degrees 17 minutes and 48 seconds. So instead of 17 minutes and 48 seconds, what Howard did was just 18 minutes. The difference is only 12 degrees. And but that can that can add up. I mean just to get just to compare them, so the sign of I don't yeah, I don't know why it rounded up so well. I don't know. Well yeah I don't know how you got that that it came out like that. No, I know I know I got it I just didn't write down I rounded it. I don't know why I rounded it so well. Oh yeah, well then that yeah, that's just a significant figures problem then. So yeah, yeah. I was always my least favorite thing in science. 
<laughs> well, if you're doing, you know, if, if you're rounding things off, just in terms of significant figures, if you're rounding things off and, and doing this Kepler stuff, you know, he uses, um, I mean, he's basically using six significant figures, five or six. So, yeah, yeah. no, you gotta, you got to go out to five. Significant figures is how many numbers make up your number. So 76.3 has three numbers in it, three significant yeah, figures. Yeah. Oh, I know, I'm saying it for everybody else, too. So, yeah. If you're going to round things off, make sure you've written down five numbers, either before or after the decimal point, five or six, and you should be okay. Okay, so let's take a look at this, get the start on this worksheet here. So, here we go. Chapter 56 worksheet. We're supposed to find the diametral distance and see if it's the same as the observed distance we got before. I'll draw up this picture. This is basically just what uh, we were you know, Ian was talking about here, so it should be pretty good. Good start to it. So here's some spot on the orbit. Here's my ruler. I don't have a compass. At least I can have a straight line. Okay. And perpendicular. Okay. So here's our spot on the uh, centric, sun, center, and this new spot that we're creating. So HR is the diametral distance. Our goal is to find HR. Mission. We will choose to accept it. Is to find that distance and see if it's the same as uh, see if it's the same as this one we got from the observations. So hopefully we'll get 162.992 or something close to it. So here we go. Some of the things we know here are that B. I didn't leave enough room to write this in here. Let's draw it over here. B. A. The eccentricity is nine two six five. Okay. We also know that Kepler says this observation has an equated anomaly, as seen by the sun. That this anomaly here is thirty six forty. Two. Oh, Howard, but Howard, you already did this one. Okay. Um, so, uh, actually, I feel, have you guys uh, started going through this one over in, um, in these other spots here? Like Seattle, have you, have you Cameron, you got, or uh, Tatra, you started working on this one here? No. Oh. Oh. As long as you keep enough decimals, it's fine. Have you, have you started doing this one, Cameron? Okay. You asking if he did both of them? No, I'm asking Cameron if he did this one yet. Oh, Cameron. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was unmuted. I said no like 20 times, so no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well... Well, I'm not going to go through it. I mean, there's a bunch of steps there that if you do it step by step, it should be fine. And, you know, Howard, uh, well, there's not enough time to go through it now, given what time it is. And um, I guess everybody should direct their questions to Howard. Okay. I mean, just the, I guess you can just say the very first step is. Hey, well, you got yourself in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Oh, stop it. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good for you. And it's good for other people. So, <laughs> you know, just the first, you know, just the first step on it is, oh, can you see that boy? First step is, uh, Find the optical find the optical equation here. We got a triangle. We got the angle here. We got the opposite sides, 100,000. We got this side, 92.65, and we want to know the opposite angle. That's a simple law of sines. That's really all there is to that. 
Um, then we'll have this angle. And then since we have these two angles, we can get the angle here. If we have the angle here, we can take 180 from it and get the angle here. We can get this length. So I'm realizing Kepler would have done the he would have done this um, he would have done this differently. He would have found AH and then unsecanted it, which is not the approach um, the way I laid it out in this worksheet. That's okay though. That's okay. So okay. Well so I think that let me just uh, come back over here for a second. I think that'll wrap it up for today. So I'm not really going to be reachable for hangouts. Intermittent, you know, we can give something a shot. Um, I think maybe in a couple of Wednesdays I could. No, nah, it's just too late. But if you have any email, you can send in email questions or answers to homeworks uh, along the way, and uh, I'll get back to you on them. And then, so in a few weeks or four weeks, It basically it'll be four weeks now to you know to work on things and finish things up, and then I think I'll do uh, we'll do one thing on part five because there's something just wonderful about part five, and we don't yeah you know, there's not there's not that much in it besides this one beautiful wonderful thing. So we'll do that in uh, four weeks. Four weeks. Yep. Four weeks. Until then, that's uh, plenty of time to. Do all these worksheets and do all the and uh, take the chance to get to know Kepler's mind. You can only know it yourself. You can't hear it from other people. So that'll uh, let me turn the. That's it, guys. So, uh? Jason? Oh yes. You said uh, we're gonna meet again in four weeks for chapter five. For part five, yeah. So we're not going to have another hangout until four weeks from today. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, out of town and kind of unreachable for the next few weeks. So. Um, but no, no other basement members going to do it. <laughs> well, if you got questions about, look, if you got questions about part one, talk to Leona. If you got questions about part two, talk to Ben. If you got questions about part three, talk to Megan. Um, no, but see, no, no one else worked on part four just this time, so uh, uh, it's hard yeah. to just jump into part four. So I mean, you can give other people a shot, but if you got things about that other stuff, definitely you know ha have a hangout with them. They're, they'll certainly be around and available. But if it's part four stuff, I think you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make do with uh, yeah. email or we, we can figure out some time. If you want to get on a hangout, we can probably figure out some time. Um, it just won't be Wednesdays at seven o'clock. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. We just got to make sure it's scheduling. All right, cool. But, um, yeah. Well, thanks a lot again, Jason. Okay. You made Howard even happier. That is wonderful. Oh. Howard even happier. That is great. Good. <laughs> Glad to hear All it. right. All right, talk to you later. Okay. See you guys. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>